A race is underway in Canada to serve the Asia's growing energy needs. British Columbia's hottest commodity right now is liquefied natural gas or LNG. Now, there are 15 LNG export terminals planned for Canada's west coast. And Christian Yeo has been checking out some of the proposed sites. He joins us live from the Toronto Stock Exchange. Christian, what can you tell us? Well, Michelle, LNG really is the big economic story for British Columbia. Hopes are so high that it will do for BC what the tar sands have done for the Albertan economy. The BC government has put its support behind these LNG projects, claiming that it'll create around 100,000 jobs for BC and will help to bring down global carbon emissions. Now, there are 15 proposed sites across BC, and we've been to a couple of them over the past few weeks. Perhaps the most interesting of them all is Kitsult, not least because of the sheer scale of the project that's planned there, but because of the town's backstory. Its owners call it heaven on earth, and for those who enjoy the quiet life, Kitsult may be just that. This ghost town 500 miles north of Vancouver hasn't been lived in for 25 years. It's a relic of a 1980s mining boom that saw companies dig for molybdenum, a metal used in military rockets. Millions of dollars were spent building this town for miners and their families. Even by today's standards, its amenities are impressive, if a little nostalgic. The town was built from scratch. Housing for a thousand people, a health clinic, a fitness centre and, of course, a supermarket. Kitsalt had it all and was primed to flourish. But the price of molybdenum collapsed and Kitsalt was shuttered just 18 months after opening. Mining is set to resume here in 2017, but this time Kitsalt may not be a one-industry town. 20 million tonnes of liquefied natural gas, or LNG, could be shipped from here each year if Adam Tang and his team get their way. This project is going to be happened very soon. Yeah. Uh, probably it's going to be sooner than the other projects in close by in this area. Formerly from Beijing, he's working with Chinese investors to build an LNG hub here to serve Asia's growing appetite for gas. The economy in China developed so fast in the past 30 years, and up to now is the second largest economy in the world. So with this fast space development, they need a lot of energy. This northern stretch of British Columbia is the epicenter of the province's gas exports, home to 11 of the 15 proposed LNG terminals. It's also where the controversial Enbridge Northern Gateway pipeline is set to terminate. Inland in the town of Terrace, the mayor says an energy boom could breathe new life into the region. To be able to regenerate and revitalize that community and get people back into the town and living there and working and, you know, the job creation and the all the good things that come from creating a vibrant community. It would be nice to see that happen again in Kitsall. But does breathing new life into the economy mean choking the environment? Burning gas is less harmful than burning oil or coal, and the government has pitched LNG as a way to make the world cleaner and British Columbia richer. Asia wants it to reduce their dependence on dirtier sources of fuel. So what could be better for us? Our chance to make the biggest contribution that we have ever made to reducing greenhouse gas emissions globally. Our chance to create 100,000 jobs right here at home. But opponents warn that exporting LNG on this scale will inevitably derail the province's carbon emissions reduction plan. I don't think that we're going to be able to extract, process, um, condense, cool, ship uh, to halfway around the world and maintain those targets that we have. Those targets, we were struggling to maintain them without a rapidly expanding LNG uh, industry. Pipelines and shipping terminals aren't the only concern to those protective of British Columbia's lush green coastline. Mining accidents like this one in Caribou earlier this month have caused national outrage and could solidify opposition to any future projects along Canada's west coast. Kitsalt may be on the cusp of a new future, but for now, it's still a lonely reminder of the past. Now, before any of these plans can succeed, Michelle, they need agreement from landowners in order to build the pipelines from the east of BC, where much of the gas deposits are, are underground, 
to the West Coast. They also need the financial backing, and that is proving more tricky uh, than some had expected for some of these sites. Chevron just uh, last week found that its partner, its 50-50 partner in its LNG project in Kitimat, has now walked away from the table. So Chevron's now looking for another partner conti to continue that LNG project. There are 15 planned right now. That's a pretty wide net, to be honest, Michelle. We're unlikely to see all of those come to fruition. All right, thank you for that update. Christian Yeo live from the Toronto Stock Exchange.